we need to create something called a rewire object to do this. Go up to new, internal, rewire. All right. Drag that down below your first monitor. We're going to rename this NN19. Okay, so do this in the same way that you did it for the track. You highlight the object, go up to this panel on the left here. If you don't see that, if it looks like this, just move your mouse over until you see this, your mouse icon turn into that and just drag out. Uh, where it says rewire up here next to the arrow, we're going to call that NN19. Okay, drag a cable from the monitor into the NN19 object. And then we're going to do the same thing for the redrum. So go up to new, internal, rewire. Drag that down here. I'm going to rename that redrum. And then we're going to hook it up to your redrum track by way of the monitor. There are a couple different steps that we need to take at this point. First off, even though we've named this NN19 in Redrum, we need to actually point these objects to the instruments in Reason. So first, highlight NN19. Now look on this left panel. The Reason instruments we created are organized by buses and channels here. Do not think of these channels as the channels we plugged into on the back of the Reason rack. Those are rewire channels for communication between logic and reason. It's not the same thing. These channels here are the internal reason channels, uh, the way that the program itself organizes the instruments. The word channel is seemingly a general purpose word and is used for a lot of different things. It might take you a while to sort it out in your head, but don't think too hard about it right now because if you're like me, it'll just make your brain hate you. So what are buses? Buses are groups of 16 channels each. Each channel represents a different thing that we created in Reason. Uh, the Reason buses start at bus 6, probably because the software developers thought it would be funny. I have no other explanation why it would start at 6. Just go with it. If you create more than 16 Reason objects or boxes or whatever you want to call them, they'll continue on bus 7 channel 1 and so on. Since we only created two instruments, they're both on bus 6. If I click here on channel, I can see the hardware interface, which is that top always present box, and then our NN19 and then the redrum. Let's choose our first instrument, the NN19, because we have the NN19 object highlighted. Let's do the same thing for the redrum. Go up to channel, choose redrum 1. Okay. Go ahead and click 1 on your computer keyboard to get that main window again. Now we have to get the sound from Reason back into Logic. Go to the Mixer panel in the main window here and you get that by going down to this bottom left clicking on Mixer and it pops up this uh, other panel. What we need to do is create auxiliary channel strips. So go up to Options, Create New Auxiliary Channel Strips. Just make one for now. We want to make the format stereo rather than mono or surround. Remember, it was left and right cables that we plugged in. And then in input, if you click on that, we have a couple different options, but down on the bottom we have reason. So now you see why we didn't plug into uh, channels one and two. Just for clarity, because in logic it lists uh, channels one and two as left and right. So we know that the NN19 was plugged into channels 3 and 4, rewire channels 3 and 4, so choose that. And output 1 and 2 is just our main out. Uh, think of that as left and right. Uh, so that's fine for our purposes right now. Go ahead and click Create. Down on that auxiliary track that was just created, double-click AUX and put NN19 RET. All right, so now we start hearing sound. Do this again so that we can hear our redrum instrument from our other device. Go up to options, create new auxiliary channel strips, and we know that the redrum was coming through channels five and six, so choose those and click create. 
go ahead and rename that Redrum Ret. All right, now if I hit my drum pad, I can now hear the Redrum from Reason. If we had not hardwired our external hardware into the Reason instruments, then whatever track we have highlighted in the arrange window would be the sound that you hear from both of those instruments. However, since we directly connected our keyboard to this track and into the Reason instrument, it is now hardwired there. Of course, because of this new freedom, there is a caveat now. We are no longer able to record these instruments. I'll demonstrate. Let's put both of these on record and hit record. If everything were working correctly, MIDI regions would have been automatically created in your arrange window. We have to do two more things. So first go up to settings and then choose recording. Click the auto demix by channel if multi-track recording. Make sure that that is checked. When Logic records MIDI, it puts it all on one track, namely the track that is highlighted in your arrange window. By checking this box though, it's going to take a look at what MIDI channel your device is broadcasting on, and it will put those MIDI notes on the track that has the same channel set on it. Okay, so if we go back to our environment, taking a look here, so our keyboard, my keyboard is broadcasting on channel 3, and my drum pad is broadcasting on channel 1. Now, every MIDI instrument has a way to internally change that channel. I think it's a little bit irritating to have to do that all the time. So if you have your device directed uh, directly cabled to an instrument track, you can just highlight that track, go up to this, uh, this left-hand side menu, and where it says MIDI channel, right now it's receiving all. I'm going to set this first one to 1. I'm going to put the redrum one. I'm going to set the MIDI channel to 2. So what's interesting about that is that not only will these two tracks record MIDI notes based on their channel, but also now my keyboard is being changed to channel 1. Similar thing is happening with the redrum. Now everything is channel 2. It's translating the channel on the fly, which is pretty awesome. Now I don't ever have to mess with anything uh, in my hardware to set that up or ever change it for any reason. The last thing that we need to do is route our signal back into the sequencer input. This is the reason why nothing was showing up when we tried to record, because any notes that need to be recorded are sent into this object. Otherwise, it won't be listening to it. Think of it like the think of the sequencer input as the tape deck, if you will. Uh, before it was being sent to it because of this sum output. The sum output of the physical input object is all of the signals that are coming from all of your physical inputs, unless you've directly routed them outside of this physical input object into another track or another object like we have done so. So now you notice when we hit our keyboard, our input view, which is just another monitor, isn't actually showing anything uh, coming into it. So all we have to do, make it so that you can see your sequencer input. Now your monitor objects in your mixer window they have another out uh, created. Every time you create a cable connecting the monitor to something else, it'll create another output. So just grab that output, drag it, and drop a cable onto the sequencer input. Do the same thing for the second one. And now we'll be able to record. 